Hey everybody. One day while sitting around the fire, my uncle told me a tale of something hidden deep in the wilds north of Toronto, something he described as a thing people think is art, but it's really not anything at all. So of course I knew it would be beautiful. Today on Art 101, we're learning the tale of an important artwork called Shift, made by a renowned artist in a potato field that somehow was forgotten and what it means to keep it safe. To get to my uncle's least favorite piece of art, you may have to do as I did and go on a quest. Crossing the swampy water, scrambling over trees, negotiating an apiary I think is abandoned, but it's still full of bees. Watching out for snakes, climbing over still more fallen trees, you emerge into a clearing where something strange lives. A zigzag of long weathered concrete walls that look like they're growing out of the ground. They also look like something that's been abandoned for decades. The work is called Shift, and it was made by iconic artist Richard Serra. Meet Richard Serra. His work can be seen around the world, usually made out of massive sheets of metal. You can even find one of his works called Tilted Spheres in Terminal 1 of Pearson International Airport in Toronto, where the section of building it's in was actually designed to accommodate the huge installation. The expanded Terminal 1 is more than a construction project. It's also a place for public art, like this enormous metal structure by internationally renowned artist Richard Serra. If you notice, as I walk into it, the voice bounces off the sides of it. This sort of thing, bear with me, I've got to run around the corner here. This sort of thing allows airport passengers to do more than just move through it. Their sounds can move through it as well, and it makes the trip to the airport and the wait a little more interesting. Sarah's often named as part of what we call minimalism, or sometimes you'll hear about him in the context of process art. Both types of art a lot of people misunderstand or just find super boring. But you'll always hear about him as one of art's heaviest hitters and one of Professor Lee's favorite artists. And he's sometimes been the subject of controversy. In 1981, his work Tilted Arc was installed in New York's Federal Plaza. It was a site-specific commission. In other words, an artwork that was designed to fit a specific place. But people who worked in the buildings surrounding it saw it as imposing, cutting them off from crossing the plaza. And the cry to have it removed resulted in a very public hearing. Eventually, Tilted Arc was taken away. Before all that, when Sarah was an emerging artist experimenting with materials and techniques, he was invited from America to Toronto in 1970 by an art collector named Roger Davidson, who commissioned Sarah to make a work on property owned by his family. Sarah walked the piece of land with fellow artist Joan Jonas. So we started in the middle of the hollow, which was flat, and we both walked in opposite directions. And when we could no longer see each other, right, where we could just barely see each other at the ends, we decided that would determine where the piece would begin, which means that if somebody entered here and someone, if someone entered here and the piece began here, you could always see where the piece began on the other side. So that described a condition of placement for the piece. But up to that point, we still didn't know what we were going to make. The six concrete slabs that zigzag through the field follow the path they had to walk, shifting diagonally so that they could keep each other in view. It's actually really romantic once you see it. Four years after Shift was installed, the potato field owned by Roger Davidson's family was sold to a land development company called Hickory Hill Investments. And that began decades during which Shift became less accessible, more vulnerable, and the stuff of legends, both for people who love art and uncles who want new subdivisions on potato fields. And that piece of land is hotly debated. Is Shift a piece of artwork that people should get to see? Or is it an obstacle in the way of new development? It's been the subject of civic debate, and so far it's been protected. Shift became a protected cultural landscape in 2013 after citizens pushed for that protection by the Ontario Heritage Act, which means Shift can't be altered or demolished. That doesn't mean it's open to the public, though. 
Over the years, a very sturdy and high fence was erected around the field, and nowadays you need to study Google Maps pretty closely or get a trusted friend to write you directions. And to be clear, you will be trespassing if you go and visit. Even though I'm a certified fake professor, I still can't guarantee your freedom from prosecution if you make the choice to brave the bees and go see Shift. Hickory Hill knows the value of what it's sitting on. The most recent estimate of Schiff's value put it between seven and eight million dollars. So why not sell it, put it in a gallery, dust off our potato field hands and walk away? The thing is, it's not that simple. What happens when you make a site-specific work that's made out of six slabs of concrete, each of them 90 to 240 feet long and 20 inches thick, in a field that's pretty not flat at all? Shift relies on the particular topography of that field. The way that it rises and falls changes your view. That's what makes it site specific. If you move Shift, there's a few things you're gonna need. First, the space. Where do you put it? You can't put Shift in a gallery because those slabs need to rise from and recede back into the ground. And that ground can't be level. It itself needs to rise and fall, just as it did when Sarah and Joan Jonas made their first walk across it. In a gallery or even in a sculpture garden, the work won't be surrounded by tall trees or the nests of cranes. It's not gonna live under that same piece of sky. So what if you make the field itself a sort of museum? One of the residential streets around it is already named Richard Sarah Court, so at least some people know it's there. Why not tear down the fence around it, put some signage up, and let people more freely make the pilgrimage, avoid the bees, and get to see shift without packing trail mix? That sounds like a really lovely idea, but it also means letting a multi-million dollar artwork be vulnerable to whomever wants to hurt it, which is a little different than a piece of public art in a very crowded square in a city. Here lies the unfixable problem with site-specific art. Sites change. Spiral Jetty, created by artist Robert Smithson, has degraded over time and required considerable intervention and money to keep it safe. But Spiral Jetty is really famous. It's documented in every art history textbook and every coffee table volume about earth art. Shift, on the other hand, is a little more like a story passed between art friends around a fire that nobody knew how to make. But there's a sort of beauty in that. The effort put into creating a physical experience in a potato field, something you need to put real effort into seeing, something that takes time to really see, as you walk along the full length of it and see how Richard Sarah really thought about the land, the rolling effect of the field, and what it felt like to stand in it on a Saturday. He made that field into a magical place, and you can only find out how magical if you make it there. Do you know about an artwork that time or people forgot? Let me know in the comments, or tell me about another art story you'd like to see broken down in a future episode of Art 101. And of course, hit like and subscribe to make sure you know when the next episode drops. See you next time on Art 101.